So if you're a Microsoft 365 user, your Excel actually comes with some pre-built templates. If you just go under File, you have a New From Template option. You got a bunch of fun templates in here you can choose from. Now, none of them actually look like the one you see behind me, but we're gonna show you how to upgrade one of the existing templates to make it look a little more visually engaging like this. We're starting with a, uh, this is a budget template that comes in Excel. I think it's the third one listed under templates. Super useful, you put in your income, you put in your monthly expenses and your savings. Gives you a nice little chart, shows you how much you spent, how much is left over, that sort of thing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take that and we're just gonna jazz it up. We're gonna focus on the visuals, kinda try to get some useful insights out of the data that's there by leveraging some of the charts that we have available to us. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, we start with a brand new fresh sheet. We're gonna make our background a nice dark color. And then I like to block in everything using rounded rectangles under the insert tab. You have shapes, you just drop in our rounded rectangles and in the upper left-hand corner, get that roundness adjusted, get our everything sized right. And then we're gonna start styling them over here on the right. So I've made a few tweaks here. I'm doing a picture or texture fill for this. Uh, this is something you can test out yourself. Essentially, we're just going and on, in our system, finding a texture that's repeating and then turning the transparency way up. So it just gives a nice subtle textured background. And we're just giving a little line and under the shape options here, we're also giving a little bit of a glow. Then I've headed right back over to the insert tab, grabbing a couple more rounded rectangles for the areas I'm gonna add uh, some of my charts and metrics into. And then I've also made this little shape here. This is under the insert tab, kind of halfway down basic shapes. You got a little donut I've just dropped in there. And what I've done is I've given a solid fill, but I've also given it a little line and done the dash selection here to give it that texture and added a little bit of a glow. The rectangles are just a standard rectangle dropped in and I've given it a little bit of a gradient in the background. We get these nice little areas to add our data on top of. Then I'm also just adding another circle here in the middle. And this is just gonna be a little transparent ring on the inside. A lot of this is just kind of creating cool, glowy kind of backgrounds. I really think the organization of the page is almost as important as the dashboard itself. So I really like to start off with a strong base for whatever I'm gonna put my, my designs onto afterwards. So now I'm gonna get my uh, charts dropped in here. I think the focus of this is really gonna be this uh, donut or pie chart that we saw in the original version. We are just gonna style it a little bit though. So we're just gonna copy paste this over, get it in place, get it looking right. So we got this in, we're gonna drop out the background, click into it and then go to chart design and we're gonna change chart type from a pie chart to a donut chart and that gives us the base we need to start styling it. And if you click into the slices of your donut chart, you can adjust the donut hole size. In this case, we want it a little bigger, and then you can click into each series and update the colors as well. So what I've done here is I've just made one side blue and one side like a dark blackish blue. And on both of them, I've made it a gradient fill. And all I've done for the gradient fill is just gone from one color to just a slightly more transparent version of the color. And that just gives it this nice depth that I really like in these types of dashboards. Now in this lower section, I know I wanted to show all of the income sources and expenses sources. So that's what we have in these two tables. So I'm just gonna highlight these. We're gonna go to insert, drop in a chart. And I know I want these to be horizontal bars. So we're just gonna do that for both of them. Great, now we've got one for both. And you know, with your data selections, if you notice the label's not coming up or anything, just go into the select data menu up at the top and get everything set up so you got the labels you need for everything right at this stage. One thing I always tell people is select data is not perfect. So you're gonna have to make adjustments to get everything looking right. So we're gonna pull these over and get them styled just by copy pasting them. Okay, we got both of them in there. We're just gonna get them roughly sized and into the place that we want them and then get them all styled. There's kind of a standard procedure for charts you'll see me use all the time here. Get rid of any unnecessary titles or labels you're not using, remove your background, remove your border, update your font color to actually make it look nice. And if you have guidelines, those sorts of things, get them adjusted so that they're not too bright or too distracting or just remove them if you're not using them. You'll see me do this on basically every chart we drop into Excel. Now for both of these, I think I wanna do a white bar. I think that's gonna fit into this design nicely. And I think I'm gonna do it with a slight gradient. So our gradient is just like a 60% transparent white to like a 90% transparent white. I like that transition and I think it works in both of these. Okay, and I think it's time to start dropping in our text and our metrics and making this look nice. So under the insert tab, you can drop in a text box. Now you're gonna have to style these. They come out looking a little weird with the white background and an outline. So we get it all cleaned up and then we can type our text in there. 
So for our labels, we're just gonna use regular text, but for our actual values, what we're gonna do is copy paste our text box, remove any text that's in it, and then we're just gonna navigate up to the formula bar, hit equals, navigate over to the metric we want, click on the cell where that metric is, hit enter, and it's gonna bring that metric into our text box and that metric will now update dynamically whenever that cell updates. Okay, so we're gonna repeat that process for every single metric that we wanna include in our dashboard. And now all of these metrics are tied to the actual value in the cells. So you update your data, it's gonna flow through to your dashboard automatically. Now I like this, but I think I wanna add some separation between some of these uh, sections here. And I'm gonna do that using a little trick where I insert a rectangle and put a gradient in it. People ask me how to do this all the time to create this effect, and it's literally just a rectangle. On one side, we've got a fairly transparent white, like 90 to 95%, and on the other, it's 100% transparent at a 90 degree linear angle here. That's all the settings for the gradient, and it just creates this nice little visual separator that looks kind of glassy and cool. You'll see me use these all across all of my projects. And I'll just copy paste this one down into here in the lower section and rotate it, and now we've got nice little sections. And there's just one last little thing. So total savings over here, it's nice. It doesn't take up much space. There's a little empty space here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back over to our data. And I notice that the saving section is set up with a date. And that means that we, in theory, could make a nice little time series. If we highlight it, go to the insert tab, and then create a uh, little line chart. I'm gonna cut and paste this over. And I'm basically just gonna remove everything. I'm gonna remove titles, I'm gonna move axes, I'm gonna move backgrounds. I'm basically just turning this into a tiny little trend line without anything else on it. And before you know it, we've got this little trend line. We can just put it in place, get it all sized up. And we just have a little something to fill in the white space there. Is that trend line the most useful chart in the world? No, but does it make things more visually interesting and kind of balance out the composition? Yeah, it absolutely does. And there it is. Before you know it, we've got ourselves a nice, visually engaging, fun dashboard. The kind of thing that people just get excited about and have fun using, you know? And I think that's a big part of dashboards, just getting people engaged with their data in a way that they might not otherwise be engaged. You don't always have to make it look all wild like this, but just the act of kind of improving your design, getting creative with your visualizations, it's gonna get your work noticed, it's gonna have a huge impact. It's the kind of thing that can really help you reach a larger audience in your organization with your data. I hope that helps everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Me and Mo here say bye. If you're not on the newsletter, hop on. I got a link to it on my profile. It's where I send out the templates like this one to help people learn this whole process. It's totally free. All I send out there is free templates, that's it. Anyway, thanks again, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.